Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic. This is a video where we pick out the questions that you've been submitting in the comment section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Well, we do our best to answer them. So without further ado, it's enough waffle from me. Connor, what's our first question? So this one has been sent in by NJ Biker 72 I have an old time trial bike that I still like. Recently, the front derailleur mount broke because of the bike's age and the manufacturer no longer being in business. His local shop told him his options were to find either a used mount that fit the model of the bike, a yeah. 2008 Guru Chrono, or turn it into a one by. Um, basically, NJ Biker is asking which is the best. What one would to we go do, for? basically? Um, so they've also mentioned a question about 3D printing. So what I would do, the best bet, is to find a second-hand or used front derailleur mount. That way, you've got the correct part of your bike. You haven't got to make or modify anything. If that isn't an option, yes, 3D printing could work, but it's going to be quite complicated. You've got some to design the part. 3D printing in a method that is particularly strong. Front derailleur takes a lot of hammering, doesn't it? It's going to be expensive. Easiest option, run one by. Yeah. Um, and if they're concerned about the gearing on the hills around their training rides, you can have to just choose a smaller size chain ring. And then when you're racing, change it for a larger one. Good I point, think, Alex. Yeah, that's the easiest one. Yeah. yeah. Next up, this is from Daniel Israel. I just switched my tyres to tubeless oh. and was wondering if you need to put the valve cap on the valves within the tubes. I always threw them away, but I know that it might be different for tubeless valves. Oh, you know this, go on. Yeah, I think you could, you could probably throw them away. Oh, there's, there's, no, there's no difference. Well, I would throw them away. There's only one exception to this rule. I don't know if you do this or not, but um, some tubeless valves, you get them in that fancy anodized finishes. So I would put the valve caps on if they're the fancy pants ones. That's yeah. my only exception to the rule, otherwise, yeah, don't use them. If it's bling, leave it on. If not, <laughs> you don't really need right. them. Right, next question in is from Michael Lazowski. Lazowski? Oh yeah, that's as good as I You got it. They say, hi, I want to change my 11 to 32 tooth cassette to an 11 to 34 tooth one. I'm running a 50 34 at the front. Should I also change the chain because the cogs are larger or is the difference minimal and you can change the chain later? So I think first thing is to try. Try it first because if your chain is already of a reasonable length, then the larger sprocket should work fine. You just need to check that the derailleur's got enough movement in it. However, if there isn't enough spare movement in the derailleur, you're going to have to get a new chain and then size it accordingly. Would you would you go along those lines or would you risk it and try it first? No, I think that's good advice, sound yeah. advice. The only thing I'd add is that if it is like a bit too tight when you're in the 34, yeah. just don't go into the 34 when you're in the big ring. In the big ring. But you have to always think about it. Oh, that's a risky move. Yeah. So when, when actually when I did the Volta, yeah. I used to run a 35-36 at the front, which... No, 55, 36 at the front. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And the Which team you're not mechanics, supposed to You're do. not supposed to. The team mechanics always gave out to me. But the thing breaker. is, the volatility is so fast on the descents, but also you have these real steep climbs. So I wanted this massive range. Big, oh, okay, so yeah. So I just had to be really caught, caught, careful. Like gentle on the gear changes. Yeah, okay. and not to go into the biggie, biggie. Otherwise, yeah. you'd be just like... Rear derailleur be on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been warned, people. <laughs> right, next question in is from... Courtney Humphreys, they say they're running a tubeless setup on a Trek checkpoint gravel bike with carbon wheels, 40 mil tires. Typically, they run about 30 to 35 psi. They've noticed that the rear tire always looks low and saggy, slash, etc. The front tire does the same if they shift all their weight forwards. Is this normal with a wider tire and the lower pressure that you have with gravel tires, or do they need to add some air pressure to round it up? They say they do most of their riding on chunky gravel. What would that, you do in this that, situation? That's, uh, that's perfectly normal. Yeah, that's, I'd right. have I'd go as low as you can go without the rims hitting like the, the stones or tree trunks oh, or anything okay. like that. Yeah, that's I'd just point. go as low as I can because it's way more comfortable. You have more grip, um, and it does feel faster when you're on the rough side. Yeah, so the tire looking a bit squishy is actually quite a good thing when you're riding off road because it means it's able to deform over all of the little bumps and the stones and the rocks that you're riding over. Yeah. Um, whereas if you pump up harder, it's just going to make the whole bike bounce around. Yeah, if you imagine the opposite, end, there's, there's no sag at all. You're just going to feel all those vibrations. It's going to be like riding uh, riding on rocks. Yeah, so it sounds fairly normal to us, doesn't it? Okay, right, next question, Connor. Who have we got? Yeah, this is from ochris9901. When upgrading from the wheels that originally came with my bike, how do I determine if a new wheel set is better than the one I already have? I'm looking for a wheel set in the $500 to put on a bike that was around $1,400 new and just don't know what to look oh. for. Weight, spoke blade, round rim depth, what do you reckon? There's loads of stuff that to take into account really? here. So a bike at that price point, I think quite often the wheels are the great place to start to look to upgrade. So they're doing well for the first point. So yeah, I would take into account looking at all of the different specs of the wheels that are available to you in that price range. And I think at the $500 marker, you're gonna to wanna to be looking at a good quality aluminium wheel set. 
and I would take into account the weight. Some of the stuff that you've mentioned, so look at the spokes, look at the hubs, make sure you're buying from a reputable brand so that you've got a degree of quality built into the hubs and the bearings. And then you can look at the rim depth, the rim width, and you just wanna make sure that all of those stats are lining up to be better than what you've already got on your bike. And I think the biggest difference here is gonna be the weight is the most obvious one. And at the same time, upgrade some good tires. There you go, good heard point. it here first. Heard it here first. Next question, Alex. Um, we've got Ritz M. They say, hey GCN, should I sacrifice comfort for aero in terms of tire width? So current setup, is a Schwalbe 128 TLE, thinking of swapping the front tire to the same tire, but a 25 millimeter version. They've got a Hyper 50 with a 26 millimeter external width. What would we do? Kind of what would you do if that situation? It depends, I think, on the rider a little bit too, yeah. like how much do you weigh um, comes into the account. And what's important to them. Yeah. Because they're saying, should they do it for comfort or, or aero? But I, I don't know what's most important to I them. I mean, personally, I. The difference between 25, 23 compared to a 28, I would always go 28. Okay. Um, I think it's just as fast, it's more comfortable, and if anything, it's almost faster, I feel. But I am over 90 kilograms. Yeah. So, if, if and you're I'm like really a, tall. A, yeah, too. you're a tall guy, aren't you? Yeah, so if you're small and you weigh a little bit less, yeah. um, then 25, 23 might be a bit faster. Yeah, also I, I think in terms of looking at their question of comfort versus aero, um, there isn't really much of a question about it. A narrower tyre aerodynamically is a smaller front to air and presents, could make the bike faster. But in terms of comfort, like you say, the wider tyre is more comfortable. So decide what is most important to you. Do you want comfort? Use a slightly wider tyre. Do you want speed? Go slightly narrower. Yeah, and it also depends a bit on where you're riding. Like if you're yeah. on really perfectly tarmac roads in, you know, south of Spain, yeah. Hawaii, never in Hawaii, but <laughs> I can dream. Yeah. Uh, compared to the bog roads of Ireland, uh, there's different, you know. Okay, right, next question, who have we got? Next question is from Yakov. Nice. Will we ever see the Hope Lotus bike's super wide fork incorporated into a TT bike, or is that advantage unique? To I don't think we will. For some reason. I don't think we will. Well, this is interesting. Yeah. Because we were talking about the collaboration between Red Bull and BMC recently. Yeah. On the tech oh show. yeah, we were. Yeah. And when you look at those forks, they do look pretty wide. Not as wide as the, the no. Lotus, but they are, you know. So the thing I think um, which is going to affect the use of this in terms of a time trial bike is placing the brakes onto the bike. So the, the way the forks are so wide and then taper in, where the caliper in a disc brake bike would normally be, or the rim brake bike, it's not actually gonna be that close to the wheel because there's so much space around. I think that's gonna be a technical problem that they'll yeah. have to overcome. I mean, you could get the disc like, right on the edge. It you could. look a bit funky. I think all of it is gonna be a, quite a unique solution. There aren't gonna be any off-the-shelf offerings, and then it's gonna limit the choice of what you have in equipment. Yeah. So I don't think we'll see it anytime soon. Right, I think that answers that, which means we're on to our final question. This is one that I've actually added in because it's submitted from my wife. She asked me the other day as we were driving along. So Chloe said, why do people try pedaling so hard going downhill? Is it really worth it? What do you think of that? It's worth it if someone's sitting on your wheel. Yeah. Because okay. then otherwise they just have to brake the whole time. Yeah. People always used to give out to me for not pedaling downhill when they're on my wheel. Yeah, okay, I'll go with that. So this was in relation to we were driving and we saw someone trying to sprint down the hill. And I said, well, when you're going really fast, it takes a lot more effort to make the bike go faster. Therefore, it takes all of your effort and you're only gonna go a little bit faster. So you best stop investing it when you're going uphill. And when you are riding downhill, the most important thing is to be aero. So the answer that I gave was, just stop pedaling, get as aero as you can, save your effort when your speed drops down, when you get onto the flat or to the next climb. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Unless you're Hank, you just want to sprint everywhere. <laughs> Unless you're Hank, ride flat out everywhere <laughs> until you gradually get tired and then give up and yeah. start again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it for this week's GCN Tech Link. Hope you found it helpful. If we didn't answer your questions, keep submitting them in the comments section down below and hopefully we'll get some in the coming weeks. Right, Connor, thanks very much for your help. Thanks it's been incredible. Me. We'll see you later. Bye.